Welcome back to Block TV here at the Ethereal Summit in Tel Aviv, the first ever Ethereal Summit in Tel Aviv. Going fabulously, so it seems, because once again, I'm getting to sit with some of the wheelers and dealers in the sphere. Co-founder at Delphi Digital, Tom Shaughnessy. Am I pronouncing your name right? You got it. Amen. Sitting right next to me, I'm uh, one of the brains behind um, uh, Delphi Digital, also host at The Chain Podcast. Yep. Brilliant. First of all, wonderful to have you with us. Thanks Tom. for having me. Um, first time in Israel, I'm assuming. It is. It is. It's hot, but I like <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. What is Delphi Digital doing at the Ethereal Summit? Yeah. So we do institutional crypto research. So recurring research for retail and institutional clients. We do everything from weekly commentary to token reports and everything in between. So Ethereum is a huge focus for us. Um, we have a huge Ethereum report out that's public, uh, but we're also here to see the new projects in the space and see what else we should cover. Now, Delphi Digital is fairly young, isn't it? Yeah, we're a year old about two weeks ago. Why was the need to start it? What was that? What was the need to start it? Yeah, so me and all my partners come from traditional finance backgrounds. Um, we saw a need for legit, to the point, sell-side type research for crypto. It didn't exist in the space at all. We thought we should start it, uh, so we did. And it's, the reception's been solid. It was a lot of work, but uh, we love doing it. You've also, you're sporting some big names on your board, like the Pomp himself? Yeah. Anthony Pompiano is a complete machine. I tell everyone that. He's an animal, um, and we love that he's a part of our company. Now, when it comes to, you know, digital, well, crypto assets, let's talk about that. Do you find, clearly, as you mentioned, you all from, you know, um, uh, establishment, so to speak, financial backgrounds, old markets, whatnot. Is the United States coming around to digital assets? Yeah, it's taking a while, uh, longer than we least. expected. Yeah, for sure. Um, the U.S. isn't making it easy. The regulations are vague. They're hard to follow. Um, a lot of companies did a lot of money and time and legal work to actually get around, not get around them, just to understand them. One good example is Blockstack. They just did a Reg A plus token offering, but it took their lawyers eight months and millions of dollars to do that. Not every project has that capital or that reach. So it's very hard to launch a regulatory compliant project in America. and. I don't think it's getting easier lately. I think it's it just isn't. hard. And then it's a very good point because, you know, we're all waiting for this elusive ETF. If we're already speaking about the United States and the SEC, something that has been talked about for the last two years. Do you think an ETF, if indeed approved, is something that will change the sphere in the U.S.? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a recent one out that's available to institutional investors through, a, through a, like an uh, exemption. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we're talking about the BTF, so to speak. Exactly. We want the real consumer ETF that actually works. And this has been talked what about benefit? for years. Yeah. And there was, you know, five or six at play last summer, uh, but we're still kicking the can down the road. It's continually being delayed. There's not clear guidance on what they need to fix. Um, so we'll see, but an ETF for the space would be huge. The inflows would be enormous. Okay. In, in lieu of that, at this point in time, how do you see the market and the sphere moving ahead? Yeah, I mean, it's moving ahead in two directions. The first one is you have Bitcoin gaining a lot of traction just because of the monetary and physical you know, mistakes of governments and countries. Then you have public smart contract platforms like Ethereum here and the dozens of competitors that are launching over the next six to 12 months. So everything from Polkadot to Cadena with their public chain to Dapper Labs, they're just creating one. Uh, there's a bunch. And the issue is, can they all compete for developer mindshare? Um, I think that- they? Oh, I don't think so, no. Don't I think it's, it's definitely gonna be an enormous task for any new layer one to compete with Ethereum. Because they not only have to attract developers, they need to build the building blocks and then let developers experiment around with them until they could find real use cases. Ethereum already has that going on. We have Kyber, Uniswap, Set Protocol, MakerDAO, take your pick. So new layer ones have to not only move faster than Ethereum, they have to get all the air out of their developer room and I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Okay, for people just entering the sphere, um, uh, actually, let me retract that. One of the things that um, uh, Delphi Digital is, um, uh, I think I saw one of your um, uh, founders, um, uh, CEOs being interviewed. You know, one of the inceptions of the sphere was to get rid of this old system. Swift, when will it die? Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if I could throw out a number on that, but if it's in reference to Ripple and XRP, exactly. um, I don't see Ripple and XRP being that successful over the long term. Uh, Why? There's no reason for the token to exist. Um, I don't want to send money to another country in a volatile crypto. I don't want to send a million dollars and you get it and it's worth 800 grand. Um, and there's just a lot of misalignment of incentives between Ripple and XRP. One of the largest ones is Ripple selling XRP every quarter by the millions. It's a constant sell pressure and it's, there's just a ton of issues there with Ripple and XRP. 
many would argue, okay, I'm just taking this a bit more grand or ideological here. Um, uh, many people would argue that Bitcoin has proven itself, that Bitcoin has proven itself as the most mature within the sphere. Is there a need for anything else? It's a great question. Bitcoin's definitely proven the most mature. It's the oldest. Um, it's and it's simple. surviving. Yeah. It's simple, it's surviving, um, it's memeable, it's likable, it's very easy to explain. So Bitcoin's not going anywhere. Is there room for Will other the things? Exactly. Will the rest survive? I definitely think there is. Yeah, just for different use cases. Um, you need different design spaces for different needs and different developers. There's certain things you can't build on Bitcoin um, that you can on other platforms. If it was able to build DeFi on Bitcoin, we wouldn't have Ethereum or we wouldn't have a Web3 push on other platforms. So it's clear that other platforms could exist for other reasons, but it's definitely earlier for the new layer ones. And when you look at the time frame of when it all needs to happen, okay, let's say Ethereum 2.0 about to come out, um, where do you see it in, let's say, two years? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of moving targets It's a lot of moving targets, and at the end of the day, that look, it's like mass adoption and use cases. We don't really have that yet, yeah. do we? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. There are a lot of moving targets, but that's just because it's so complex to build out all the technical aspects of, say, something like Ethereum. I'm okay with it getting to later month or two. It doesn't matter because it's something that has to exist for 50, 100, or 1,000 years. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Delphi Digital, a year in September. How would you describe the future for you guys? Yeah. What it's, is the uh, aim? It's been a fun year, you know. Uh, now that everything's built out, we're having fun just crushing work, which we like. Uh, the consulting business is taking up a lot of our time, which is good. So helping funds and projects design their token econ and do research, it's fun. But we just want to continue growing and doing research. Uh, there was a reason I asked this question is because you, um, uh, you know, you're already in existence when the storm swept into the sphere, and that's Libra. What has Libra done to the sphere? It's attracted a lot of attention, <laughs> that's for sure. You don't need to be PC. Yeah. <laughs> um, the question is, can Libra compete with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and others? And absolutely not. Um, that's if it even launches in its current form. It's a good question. I mean, Libra is supposedly right now launching next year, okay? Um, we don't have an exact date, but let's say it does. What is the fear of that? It's marketing itself, it's a cryptocurrency. We can argue that it's not, but does it really matter? And then if regulation is set to Libra, what does it do to the rest of the sphere? It's a great question. Um, you're right, it doesn't matter. As long as people can use it, it doesn't matter, right? As long as, remember, Facebook has a huge ecosystem of billions of users between all of their properties. If they're able to create a crypto or a quasi-crypto that could then be an on-ramp to other cryptos like Bitcoin and ETH, it's a huge economic road or uh, on-ramp and also a huge educational on-ramp. Yep. This is Facebook's Libra. This is the differences to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let's get involved and now let's learn more. And that's that's the big sell, my point. And you saw the uptick maybe an in interest in you guys after Libra was announced? That's what yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's it's just it's the first like massive push outside of crypto to the real world, and that's Mainstreaming, big. Mainstreaming, exactly. Exactly. Into those headlines at the Wall Street Journal, not to become you know who cannot compete with Block TV. But um, Tom <laughs> Shansi, I want to thank you so much for sitting with us today from Delphi Digital. As we mentioned, um, we were here at the Ethereal Summit in Tel Aviv. We were Block TV. We'll be right back. Thanks so much. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.